brothers and sisters in the faith, I always enjoy the cheerful hello at the beginning of the service, and I always hesitate to stop it because we're having such a good time catching up with one another. As we look at the Acts of Contemporary Apostles, we have a fair amount going on in Advent. The alternative gift phase you all are aware of, so if you have not yet taken part, as I have not, but I've got information to do so, please remember to do so this week because it only lasts through the 16th. We're ordering poinsettias. If you would like some in honor of or in memory of loved ones, please follow the instructions you can find in the bulletin about that. We still have some poinsettia to pay for, so if you're at all inspired, please go ahead and dedicate one or two. Okay, that would be good. So we order a certain number, and then we hope that people will contribute. That's what happened this year, yes. All right. And then may I ask what happens to them when the services, when, once Christmas Day, which is a Sunday, is accomplished, what happens to those poinsettias? Do we leave them through Typically. Epiphany? I believe people take them home if they want. It's usually that people take them on Christmas Eve because Christmas isn't on Sunday. Mm -hmm. If you wish for us to need them until Sunday, um, we can take them out. We could do that, that too. Yeah. All right. So we've got flexibility. If you know you're not going to be here on Christmas Day, you can take yours home. And if you know that you are and you'd like them to remain to decorate the sanctuary for an extra day, you can do that too. All right, Christmas gifts. Marilee, is there anything we need to say about that? Well, just this technically is our last day to bring them in. I know that there's a couple that are waiting for delivery, and that's fine. We've got a little day or two that I'm hoping like Wednesday, Thursday, I will load them in the car. And with Caroline and Anthony's help, we'll get them into the uh, children and youth. Thank you, Mr. Teenage Grandchildren. That's great. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Yes. All right, good. Thank you. Uh, this year's Christmas card list is available in the back of the sanctuary. Um, so please pick one of those up and you can help brighten the holiday for some of the folks that you love. And finally, there's an <coughs> item about wreaths across America, and I'm thinking maybe Nancy would like to say a word about that one. Uh, it'll be next Saturday, the 17th. Anybody and everybody is welcome. And if you want, there's a still supplier factory. You can let Cash Mace know if you would like one specifically for a specific uh, grave site or if you want to place it yourself. The ceremony is at noon, so come on out and see what it's all about. All right, thank you so much. Are there other acts of contemporary? Yes, Gail. Uh, <clears throat> we will not be having Sunday school on Christmas Day. Right. Christmas Day, we know that families with children often are opening presents under the tree, and sometimes families with grown-ups are doing the same thing. So we will resume Sunday school the week after Christmas. Are there others? If not, then as we... Oh, I appear to have left out the I opening. Play one anyway. That's good. So our, our centering thought, while Bill plays music to settle and calm our hearts and minds, is this from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. The celebration of Advent is possible only to those who are troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor and imperfect, and who look forward to something greater to come.
The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall, shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. We would like the first candle, the candle of hope, because Jesus is the hope of nations. We would like the second candle, the candle of love, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We light the third candle, the candle of joy, because only God's love brings us great joy. Our hymn is number 38, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear.
you all learn, I'm suspecting a, a new hymn, a relatively new hymn for this congregation, Zachariah's Song. And then while Gail reads the Old Testament lesson, Dan and Joy are going to depart the sanctuary and Elizabeth and Zechariah are going to come back in. While they, after Elizabeth and Zechariah come back in, I think I'm going to ask, is there someone willing to leave the confession of Belhar so that Dan and Joy can come in soon? Okay, thank you, Paul. Paul officially chairs the worship committee, so it's especially appropriate that he would kindly volunteer to lead the congregation. And that should give Dan and Joy time enough to come back into the, into the building. All right, thank you. Bill? We have done this one before, but it's been a long time. So I will play it through uh, one speaker.
people such as yourselves, but we have come from long ago and far away. This is my husband, Zechariah. My name is Elizabeth, and I have a cousin named Mary. You may be familiar with her story because she was the mother of Jesus. Today we're going to tell you our story as well, because we are like the hinge of history. Zechariah and I followed all of the rules and regulations that we found in our scripture. I've been told that you call it the Old Testament, the Old Covenant with God between the people of faith and the creator and sustainer of the universe. We also came to know Jesus, and we believe that he was part of the New Covenant. So Zechariah and I are like the hinge of history between the old covenant that still is maintained and the new covenant. We came from the priestly tribe, the Levites. My family was of the household of Elijah, and Zechariah's family was of the household of Aaron. It was a privilege to be among the Levites. I must be very careful how I light the incense in the presence of the name. Blessed be his name. I am so proud to be a member of the uh, House of Levi. We are the only ones who are permitted in the temple to, to light the incense. Now others may come who are qualified to, to pray. Men in the outer temple, or men in the inner temple, excuse me, women and children in the middle court, and foreigners and aliens in the outer court. But it's only, only those who, uh, uh, who are uh, part, of, you know, part of the clan of Levi that, that may come to the, uh, to the inner temple. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for our prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and the power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, this sounds strange to me. I'm an old man, and, and my wife isn't very young either. But if I, I, I'm really having a hard time understanding how we will have, you know, how we can have children. If, if, if you're from God, as, as, as you say you are, why didn't God pick someone younger? The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, 
which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Welcome home, John. How did it, Zechariah, how did it go in the temple today? Oh dear, oh dear, let me get you a writing tablet and a stylus. You can explain what happened. Really? All right, well, I think we should remember to breathe. <laughs> Remember that we belong to God. We have followed every rule and regulation all of our lives. We've done our best. And if you have seen a fearsome angel, but that angel sits at the foot of the throne of God, then we have to trust that God will use us. And we'll see. This may be a nine-month process or longer. You know how these things work. We'll see. We're beyond this age, but you know, think about Abraham and Sarah. It happened for them, maybe it will happen for us. And so, as you may already know, it did happen for us, and my cousin Mary came to visit. Now, Zechariah was mute. Fortunately, he and I both could read and write, because we had had to learn that, being of the house of Levi, in order for him to be able to serve in the temple. And so we could communicate some. It was cumbersome, but we could. When Mary came, she walked in the door of our home and she said she could feel her child, for she too was with child, and kicking, and I felt my child leap in my womb as if for joy. We started sharing about how she had been visited by an angel, and I shared how Zechariah had been visited by an angel. And then she started to pray. And she said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has considered the humility of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Surely the Mighty One has done great things. By the strength of his arm, he has swept the powerful away in their thoughts, taken down kings from their thrones, and lifted up the poor. He has filled the needy with good things and sent the rich empty away. God has fulfilled the promises made to Abraham and Abraham's descendants forever. So my cousin prayed. And we visited with each other for a few weeks before she went back home to her husband Joseph, who I've been told is going to come and visit with you next week. In the meantime, I had our baby, and having seen the note from Zechariah some months before that said, the angel tells me God would like him to be named John, I told our neighbors that his name would be John. You know how neighbors can be. They started coming over, and they knew that this was going to be our only child, and Zechariah was an older gentleman, and so they kept saying to me, you have to name him after his father. Zechariah, Ben Zechariah, Zechariah, son of Zechariah. And I said, well, no, I'm going to send you to his father to ask about this. And so the neighbors started to put pressure on Zechariah, who wrote in big letters, his name is John. His name is John. My cousin Mary and I got to see each other occasionally through the years as our boys were growing up. And I must say, not only were the boys a blessing, but they were each in his own way quite unique. Our son was obsessed with the thought that the Messiah was going to come in our time. And Mary's son was obsessed with a connection with the creator and sustainer of the universe, blessed be he. In fact, when young Jesus was only 12 years old, the whole village had gone up to Jerusalem to pray. We got to see each other then, because of course we lived in Jerusalem. And after the appropriate number of days, the whole village went back down the, the mountain of Zion toward the village. And at dinner time, Mary and Joseph realized that Jesus was nowhere to be found. They came rushing back to the city and they stayed with us for three days and guess where they found that boy? 
He was in the temple, talking with the elders. In fact, Zechariah was the one who found him there with some of the older priests, the ones who were too old to actually light the incense. When our sons were grown, God had a special call for each one of them. Our boy went out into the wilderness, and he wore clothing made of animal skins, and he only ate the kinds of food that one could find in the wilderness, locusts and wild honey and the occasional herb and salad. One day, his cousin Jesus came to him because our boy was out there preaching repentance. Repent! Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And people were coming to hear this message. I don't know what it was about the temple that they no longer found compelling. But they went out to hear our boy, and one day, his cousin Jesus came to him. And our son fell on his knees and said, I am not fit to tie your sandal. And Jesus said to him, get up. Get up, for John, you are to baptize me. And when John did baptize him, it was as if the heavens opened, and a dove came down and lit on his head, and we heard a voice saying, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Follow him. Zechariah and I are most definitely among those who look back to the Old Covenant and forward to the New Covenant and hope to remain faithful all our days. Thank you for letting us share our story.
suffering of the body. We thank you that you have come as a servant, and we ask that we would continue to be servants of the servant Lord Jesus himself. And we thank you that we are placed in relationships with other people so that we can care. We have lost one of our number last night in this mortal life, O oh God, and now you have him. And for those who grieve, we hope that they would have a deep awareness that the depth of grief is simply the mirror of the breadth and depth of their love. We also recognize that you love us even more than we can love one another, and we thank you for that. We pray for the world around us, for those of us who are going to be celebrating Advent and Christmas in the coming days, for those who are of other beliefs, for those who are of no particular belief at all. You have given us to one another as neighbors, and we thank you. We thank you for the countries of this world. For our own great country, we pray for those who have been recently elected and those who are long-term in positions of authority, asking for your wisdom to inform their choices. And we pray for the other countries of the earth, those with which we agree and those with which we don't. For all of your children on this beautiful planet, we lift them up before you, even as we lift ourselves up before you, asking for your blessing this day. And we do ask that you would hear us as we pray together Jesus' prayer when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. Amen. We have been blessed. Let us be a blessing to others by giving our tithes and offerings.
flurries and raindrops, may the light that enlightens the world be yours. And may you hear the voice of angels as we prepare for Christmas. Now go forth into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord.